Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. It's the weekend. You know what that means. Let's jump into your mailbag questions. I had a bunch of really good ones here. As always, we pull subscriber mailbag questions, and I try to get the best ones. So if you didn't get your question answered, well, then, of course, stay tuned. We'll give you a chance to go ahead and ask more questions down below for next week's mailbag. Let's start with uh, Daryl Stevenson. It says, will Quez Watkins get more usage in this upcoming season? Ah, uh, mm, that's a tough one. Listen, I was really excited about Quez Watkins, but I think right now, honestly, if I'm being 100% real with what's going to happen in the offseason, at training camp, the start of the season, Quez Watkins, Quez Watkins could easily, easily be cut. Like, Watkins could easily be cut at the end of training camp. Now, here's the deal. Every single year in the National Football League with every single team, I've said this, I think I've said this before, fans get very excited about late-round draft picks. And that's understandably so because the idea is, well, what if we just stole some, you know, six-round wide receiver and turned to be a superstar? Like, what a deal. Like, what a steal. Dark horse candidate. And every single year, there's one player on every single roster that everyone's like, oh, my goodness, you know, can he be a superstar? This year, it's Jacoby Stevens. That's the Eagle late-round draft pick linebacker who it's like, well, played at LSU. Maybe he's going to be good. Last year, it was between Watkins and Hightower. They had two of them, right? They had Hightower a little bit earlier in the late rounds, so then they had of course, Quez Watkins taken after him. And I was excited about both. I thought Hightower would go ahead and be a little bit better, and yet neither of them literally did anything. I mean, Quez Watkins last year, for all the speed that he has, barely got on the football field, and when he did, didn't do much, right? Seven catches, 106 yards, and a touchdown. And that's with the Eagles having a terrible wide receiver core. Like, that's the whole focus here. It's not that Quez Watkins was terrible. It's that Quez Watkins was terrible on a receiving core that might have been the worst in the National Football League. Like, if you had all the opportunity to make the most out of it, and yet completely unable to do so. However as we say in this uh, business, is there's always next year, right? So year two, as a rookie wide receiver, year one is pretty difficult. Maybe year two, you can go ahead and get things going. The problem that we have right now in terms of Watkins and everybody else is there's some competition in terms of the fifth wide receiver spot. Like we know it's going to be Smith, Rager, Ward, and Fulton. Like we know those are the top four. You can put them in whatever order you want. Those are going to be your top four wide receivers. Then you have Whiteside, Hightower, and Watkins. Those are kind of the three guys competing for the final two roster spots in terms of the wide receiver. Will they keep five? Will they keep six? That'll be the main question here. I don't have very high expectations for Quez Watkins, but I don't have high expectations for John Hightower either. I think both of them could potentially go ahead and be cut. I think the battle is going to be, of course, found out and discovered during training camp. I hope one of them emerges and the Eagles have a much better receiving core in terms of depth-wise than they did last year, but even if both White Tower, or, or all three, White, uh, White Side, Hightower, and Watkins all stink, I still think they're going to be just fine with Smith, Rager, Ward, and Travis Folga. Okay, let me ask you guys this. First question down below, pin comment, who wins the number five wide receiver battle? Let's just say, I uh, keep saying, Smith, Rager, Ward, Folga, who's going to be the next wide receiver. Is it Hightower? Is it Whiteside? Or is it Watkins? Type W down below for Whiteside. Type H down below for Hightower. And type uh, I, and, and then type um, Q down below for Quez oh, Watkins. So you got JH for Hightower, QW for Quez Watkins, or JW right now for uh, JJ or Thigo Whiteside. All right, let's go to the next mailbag question here from Chris, who says, you talk about the Eagles' money and how much they have to spend, because I've heard two different things. One person says they're still under the cap, then another person said like $3 million above it, so which is true. Um, the second person, let's just say that. The second person, whoever you're listening to, is correct right now. I'll go ahead and throw it up. Here is the, the Eagles' cap space situation right now for the next three years. Now, again... This changes like almost every single week in terms of restructuring deals and signing new people and training for people. And so by no means is this going to be the set in stone cap space for the next three years. Currently, they have about $2.73 million in free cap space. Now, they can restructure some deals and move some things around and make a lot more money. So if you wanted to trade for a Xavier Howard, like we talked about, you want to trade or sign a Steven Nelson out of Pittsburgh. I mean, listen, there's a lot of options in order to make that more. But currently, you wanted the actual numbers is $2.72 million. Now, in 2022, it's currently projected right now, Philadelphia, 12 $1.83 million in free cap space. That will be more, right? Because they're not going to re-sign people. They might cut some people. That will be more money than $12 million. I think upwards of $20 to $25 million in 2022. So that'll be a, a fluid thing there in the uh, next offseason. However, in 2023, they have $80 million in cap space. I mean, $80 million. That's when Fletcher Cox's deal goes ahead and comes up. Obviously, Brandon Graham would not be on the roster at that point. And so in terms of future cap space and future ability to go ahead and sign people, the next couple of years, they are going to have money and they will be, I mean, for sure, having some big NFL off seasons. But again, listen, the Eagles, they will have money. Again, it's just a matter of how much do they want to move things around. I really want them to go sign a free agent cornerback. Like I really want Steven Nelson. They can make the moves in order to go ahead and free up the money by just converting some bonuses, which of course every single NFL team does. Now, in terms of overall capital, the next couple of years. They got a lot of draft capital. I mean, look at this. Just to be clear, it's not just all about free agents. They will have a lot of draft capital starting next year. Three projected first-round draft picks. It'll be two if Carson Wentz does not play 
X amount of snaps. It'll be two seconds if he doesn't play enough snaps. But at least, what, two firsts? At least two seconds. Although the best case scenario would be what you see on your screen right now. Three first round draft picks, a second, and a third. So the overall point of your question is they have money right now. It's a little bit. They're going to have a little bit more the next year, a little bit more the next year, but then, of course, the draft picks next year are the big ones to go ahead and keep an eye on. If they have three first-round draft picks next year, this roster can go from what I think is already very good right now to elite in a very short amount of time because three first-round draft picks, that's like three starters, like three quality, cheap young starters you just insert right there onto the roster. All right, before we go into the next question, I want to thank you guys for getting us to 19,000 subscribers. We were asking for it the past couple of days, and we got it. We're hitting 19,000 subs here on this channel, which is crazy. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Let's go for 20,000, right? The goal is 20,000 subs by the start of training camp a couple of weeks away. And so if you're new, go ahead and go down below and subscribe. And remember, only our subscribers get their mailbag questions answered on the show. So make sure you guys are subscribed down below. Um, Ryan says, uh, many fans are rightly questioning the cornerback and linebacker positions of the Eagles, but how much of an impact do you think uh, that makes in terms of winning and losing games? It makes a big impact. Look at the team last year. Corner and linebacker were terrible. The Eagles lost a lot of games. Not the sole reason, we know, but still definitely has an impact. Although, I'm going to go positive here. I, I think the Eagles 2021 linebacking core can be really fun. Like, the Eagles linebacking core can be fun in 2021. They're pretty darn good. And they went from being the worst group to being not the worst group. Now, they're still not necessarily elite. I mean, look at the depth chart right now we're not going to sit back and say oh my goodness I mean this is Singleton and Wilson and Edwards are going to be top five in the league top 15 hmm? top 10 I mean I think they can be pretty darn good if you get little additional bits from Bradley or Taylor or Jannard Avery I think this linebacking core can be a lot better than a lot of people were expecting it's corner that's the problem we talk about that all the time right Steven Nelson that's why I want to go ahead and sign him corner is the issue linebacker much less of an issue with the additions of Wilson and the emergence of Singleton and TJ Edwards okay before we go ahead and keep going here quick shout out to our friends at Newsbreak you guys gotta have the Newsbreak app downloaded right now and then following us as well chatsports.com forward slash Eagles NB is the link to go and download the app and then whenever you're on your Newsbreak app of course subscribing to all the different news and politics and uh, sports websites and articles that you want Follow us, Eagles Now by Chat Sports. We're trying to get as many followers on our Eagles Now by Chat Sports news break page. And so go down below, of course, click the link to download the app, and then search for us, Eagles Now by Chat Sports. And then all of my content, everything we do here on, on, on the channel, videos, posts, get uploaded onto the news break app, onto our Eagles Now little page there. And if you're subscribed to it, then of course you see all of our content whenever we go ahead and drop it. So make sure you guys go ahead and pick up the news break app. And of course, make sure you guys have us followed on Eagles Now by Chat Sports on the app. All right, let's go ahead and go to Beast, who says, most, who is the most underrated addition for the Eagles? Is Jalen Hurts a very underrated fantasy football quarterback? Why is Philly so underrated? They have a top five O-line, a good running game, and some good players on both sides. Philly has, uh, only has one major hole, cornerback two. You're the best Eagles YouTuber I have ever watched Fly Eagles Fly. Listen, Blake, I appreciate it. Um, a couple of questions here. Most underrated addition for the Eagles this year was Anthony Harris. I mean, for sure. I mean, in terms of overall offseason additions, it's Anthony Harris. But the problem is that you can't just say Anthony Harris because they got Brian Kerrigan, and they went ahead and got Eric Wilson. Like, they had a very good defensive free agent period during the NFL offseason. In terms of your underrated addition, I would then go Anthony Harris because we don't talk about him a lot in Philadelphia, but he's going to be a big impact on the backside of the Eagles secondary. In terms of your other question, Hurts, yes, he is an underrated fantasy football quarterback, but I want to get into why Philly is so underrated because you made some really good points here. Listen, the media only remembers 2020. I talk to a lot of friends right now. I talk to a lot of people in the media. I work in the media. The media remembers 2020. When you talk to a national media pundit or even just a guy in the street who doesn't follow the Philadelphia Eagles, they think 2020. They go, oh, wow. I mean, they had to get rid of Carson Wentz, and they fired their head coach, and the O-line was so terrible last year, and weren't they really bad on defense? Like, they they think back to last year. They don't think about what the this year is going to go ahead and look like. They don't think about the fact that they have a top-five offensive line, and they have a top-five defensive line, and they have a very talented running back group, and they have a good tight end, and they have really strong, interesting young wide receivers, and they have good, young, interesting linebackers, and they have good, I mean, good safeties, I think, overall as well. I mean, if you look at this roster up and down, the only real holes that you find are, one, the other safety spot waiting on McLeod's injury, because you got Harris and then probably McLeod, but McLeod's got to get healthy from his, uh, of course, season ending, ending injury last year. And then cornerback two, and you, you mentioned that, right? Cornerback two is a major hole, but everything else is a minor hole. This pass rush is going to eat the offensive line is going to work defensive lines over and over and over again. And as long as Hurts is good, as we expect him to go ahead and be, this can be a very good Philadelphia Eagles football team. And so when you see the national media talk about Philadelphia, talk about us, I mean, it's just because they're coming from last year's mentality. They don't think ahead. They didn't look at what we did this offseason. At least they don't care what we did this offseason. And we're going to catch a lot of people sleeping. I mean, you want to get your bets in on Philadelphia right now. Can you make some money? A lot of people are sleeping on Philadelphia. You guys agree, right? Like the Eagles are being underrated, right? 
I mean, is there anyone out there besides, I guess, you and me who are saying the Eagles can be a playoff football team and win the NFC East this year? I, I got a lot of friends here uh, where I live who are just like, oh, the Eagles are going to be trash this year. Oh, Jalen Hurts can be trash. No, no, no. You guys are underrating them. I, I mean, if you, if you agree, type Y down below for yes. If not, type N down below for no. Um, let's go and do one more here. John says, is this Howie's hot seat year? If we have a terrible season, do we go into full rebuild mode or do we finally cut ties with Howie and rock out with the roster head coach next season with a new GM? Let's not forget all the bad Howie has done over the years with all the noise, noise surrounding Jalen and our new head coach. Our new head coach, everyone has forgotten the Howie situation and why some of our players are were upset with the front office in the first place. You're right. I mean, yeah. Okay, here's the deal. Howie needs to win eight games. Like, if I was giving Howie advice on what Howie has to do to keep Howie's job, he's got to win eight games. Anything less than eight games, I think Howie Roseman probably gets fired. And I think Jeffrey Lurie would probably eventually finally come to that come to that, to that uh, excuse me, realization. If they win eight games, they win more than eight games, Howie stays. And they obviously, I think he should because you win eight, nine, ten games. That's obviously a very good year for the Philadelphia Eagles. But in terms of Howie uh, being the hot seat, I think you would have to say yes, right? A lot of moves this offseason, and they have a lot of draft picks next year. And I think that's one of the big main factors is do you want Howie Roseman to be at the helm for three first-round draft picks next year, or do you want to have someone who's a little bit better, right? That's kind of the question mark I have um, right now. But I do definitely think that that's a real possibility. Okay, actually, we're going to do another question here in one second because we get a lot of DMs on Twitter, and so I want to quickly plug everyone on, on, on Twitter who DM me uh, questions. At Real Thomas Mod, give me a follow and a DM if you guys have questions there. I always answer back on my Twitter account. I was answering uh, DMs this morning, so if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, give me a follow. And because of that, we'll do a bonus question here. Big Dog 1891 says, with the Eagles cutting Jamie Newman, I think this leaves the door open for Greg Ward to possibly switch back to quarterback since the wide receiver room is so packed. No. No, Ward is 100% a wide receiver. Way too small to play cornerback right now, or quarterback right now. He's obviously slimmed down a little bit to play wide receiver. And he was the best receiver and has been for the past couple of years. So I think he's going to be a top four receiver. Talked about that a little bit earlier. I'm not worried about Greg Ward um, in terms of being a receiver. And I definitely don't want him to be a quarterback. Like, they're going to be fine at quarterback. And they went ahead uh, and, and just signed a quarterback just a couple of days ago whose name is escaping me right now. But he, of course, comes over from San Francisco. I'm still not able to remember who it was. But you, you get the point. We talked about it here. Uh, the Eagles had three good quarterbacks on their roster. You got Flacco sitting there at number two, and then the 49er quarterback they signed in free agency, who I think is going to be pretty good. Despite the fact that I can't remember his name, I'm sure I'll see comments saying, ah, da, 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 da. I'll think about it as soon as I'm done with this video. But there you go. Ultimate Up for today here on Put the Eagles Now. I am your host, Thomas Mott. Have a great rest of your weekend. Hope you enjoyed today's mailbag video. We sign off to the rest of your day.